Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Comic Book Geezers. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Cover. It's a facsimile edition, right? Because sometimes you just got to do the facsimile editions of The Amazing Spider-Man, number one, from 1963. Yeah, who's, who's, who's affording a vintage copy of this issue? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. So if you can get your hands on a facsimile edition that uh, basically recreates the entire issue... That'll just have to do. So for, you know, like 10 bucks or so, you can get a copy of this. Two great feature-length Spider-Man thrillers. This, of course, follows up his appearance in Amazing Fantasy, number 15. And he, they decided it was so popular, let's just give him his own comic right away. You get two stories in here. Spidey trying to join the Fantastic Four and the Chameleon Strikes, which basically makes the chameleon Spidey's first ever supervillain. And the chameleon, I always thought, yeah, he had no superpowers or anything like that, but he, the way he could disguise himself as anybody, I'm surprised they didn't use him more in the years to follow. I mean, he only made a few appearances. You would think he'd be someone that could go after Daredevil or any of the kind of street uh, heroes, right? That would make a lot of sense. But no superpowers, I get it. So here uh, we got uh, Stanley script, Steve Ditko art, Johnny D, the lettering. So for those of you who may have read this at some point or have this in various other editions, always cool to see these uh, the way they were originally presented, but using paper from today, right? <laughs> so here, just a little uh, kind of recap of the whole story. You know, Peter obviously becomes Spider-Man, getting shunned by his kind of classmates, right? Because he's, uh, he's the nerd, he's the geek. The issues with Aunt May, right? Because, of course, now Uncle Ben is dead and Aunt May is having problems paying the bills. I guess, did they not have insurance? They never touched on that, right? So, of course, Peter overhears the you know discussion with the landlord and how you, you need to pay your rent. I'll pay you next week and whatnot. So he goes out to try and make a living, right? To go and try. He Remember, if you remember the, from the uh, previous episode or previous appearance, uh, he goes out and does these kind of like, you know, wrestling matches to, to, to obviously with his newfound power to make some money. But obviously uh, that's proving to be difficult because a guy named J. Jonah Jameson is publishing in the Daily Bugle about how Spider-Man's an actual menace. So now the places don't want to hire Spider-Man because he's being perceived as a, as a bad guy, so to speak, right? So, of course, Jonah is doing all of his, uh, you know, promoting Spider-Man, the wall-crawling menace out there. But meanwhile, his son, John Jameson, the astronaut, is set to do this big uh, test flight, right, with a rocket. And then, you know, Peter notices Aunt May going to the pawn shop and selling her jewelry for money. And he's, he's beside himself because he's like, man, I can make some money. Why, why is this being taken away from me? So then part two, we go to where the, uh, the shuttle is gonna go up and it goes up, but something happens, something is wrong. So the pod that John Jameson in falls apart from the rocket starts spiraling out of control so everybody's trying to freak out how do they rescue how do they rescue and spider-man's like well of course peter's watching and he's like well maybe i can go and rescue john jameson and then people will see that i'm not a bad guy and then maybe i can go and try and make some money right so he goes to jonah j jonah jameson's office at the bugle He's there at the police captain or someone from the from the military, right? And says, "I have an idea. I have a plan." So he goes back to the uh, back to the airport and uh, or wherever this is, and he goes and he commandeers someone to take a plane up to go chase after the ship that's flying around. Okay, as they get closer, he does his thwip twin right he gets onto it gets onto the capsule and is able to get John Jameson to put the parachute on the capsule and let it get down to safety so he's all happy now he's like ah, I did what I need to do things are gonna look up for me 
Now, you know, now I'll be able to get a job and Spider-Man won't be looked at as a menace. And then, but there we have it. He sees the next issue of the next uh, newspaper, the Daily Bugle. This newspaper demands that Spider-Man be arrested and prosecuted by J. Jonah Jameson. He's like, what? After all I just did. So basically, J.J., Triple J, is basically saying that it was all a plan. Right? It was all a plot by Spider-Man to steal the spotlight from my son. I accuse him of sabotaging the capsule, right? So now all of a sudden... Nothing worked that he basically just tried to do. So there we have the end of that story. Next story, Spider-Man vs. the Chameleon, guest starring the Fantastic Four. So basically, uh, Spider-Man figures, you know, he's, I got to find a way to make money. Maybe I can go join the Fantastic Four. They must make tons of dough. They'll take me in a second with all my powers and stuff, and I'll be the newest member of the Fantastic Four. I'll be put on salary. It'll be great. So what does he do? He you know, finds his way up to the Fantastic Four Tower right there, lets himself in. They're like, how did someone get past all of our defenses? And then, uh, so of course, they try to stop Spider Man because they're not quite sure. They don't really know him. They're not quite sure what's going on. So he gets into a little tussle with them. All right. He's able to kind of thwart everything that they're doing. But then they have a discussion. And he's like, hey, listen, I'm just here as a tryout. I just want you to bring me on board because I know you guys make lots of money. I need money. And they're basically like, we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, at all of our, the extra money we get from here, it goes into scientific research and whatnot. We only keep enough money for simple expenses, and that's it. And he's like, really? I'm out of here. So he takes off and goes, I can't believe that uh, I thought that I could do this, right, whatever. As this is all going on, we see the evil chameleon plotting to get some very important scientific information from a lab. So, of course, he disguises himself as one of the fellow scientists so he can get some information then if he sees all this information on spider-man all this news on spider-man he's like well maybe i can you know disguise myself as spider-man and use that to get what i need right so here's some ads and things like that so what does he do his plot goes on he pretends to be first he pretends to be a cop and he pretends to be someone a scientist and he pretends to be spider-man he creates this like kind of like gun that does somewhat of a webbing type of thing all right but spider-man is on to him follows him around then of course he puts on a disguise to show he's a cop so he infiltrates the cops spider-man shows up they're like hey you we're gonna grab you and he's like he knows this chameleon guy is among them so he kind of tussles with the cops and the, the chameleon in disguise slips out and then they see him walk on the wall They're like oh that must be the real spider-man so who is this guy and they notice the one cop has his uh, uniform ripped and underneath it is a spider-man outfit so they realize that's the chameleon guy put him under arrest but meanwhile spider-man says to himself nothing turns out right i wish i had never gotten my superpowers because like nothing's working everything he tries to do just doesn't happen this is the life of spider-man right and then uh, the Fantastic Four are reading in the news, and they're just worried about their little kind of altercation with him. And they're basically like, uh, he's so powerful and so confused. What if Spider-Man ever turns his superpowers against the law? Ben says, yeah, if a teenager can be so blamed strong, how strong will he be when he gets older? Johnny says, ah, we won't ever have to worry about him. Reed says, won't we, Johnny? I wonder. And the whole world will have to wonder till the next great issue. Don't miss it. The end. There you have it. Issue number one, facsimile edition of the Amazing Spider-Man. If you've read this, let us know what your memories are of the first ever official Spider-Man issue number one down in the comments below. And if you've gotten a facsimile, let us know what you think of some of these facsimiles. Because, you know, they have a bunch of them for some of these really, really expensive and rare comics. And, you know, for most of us who aren't going to be able to plunk down thousands of dollars for something like this, cover price of <clears throat> $3.99, pretty good. You can get it for about, you know, 10 bucks or so. So let us know what you think down there in the comments. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, get the links to the Sea of Tranquility merch page if you'd like to get a comic book user's t-shirt or a uh, coffee mug. right? So thanks in advance for all your support there. And we'll see you soon here on the channel with more stuff. I uh, hope to be getting together with Bill this coming weekend. We haven't done any videos together in about a month. So hopefully we'll be uh, able to do that. And uh, those will be next week. So. Till then, I'm Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.